Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. I'm super excited about this video and it's actually been um, a highly requested one. I've been requested to film my most used kitchen tools and products. Um, I've been collecting kitchen tools for um, many years. I've been married now for, it'll be 13 years this year and so um, even before that when Adam and I lived together I just always had an interest in uh, collecting tools that I thought would um, make my life easier in the kitchen and help me make the dishes that I want to make so with that being said let's get right into it uh, I will try to leave links to everything I mentioned in this video in the description box below if it's not available um, anymore I won't obviously be able to link it but if there's something that I forget um, please let me know. So let's get into this video. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of have everything laid out on my island here. There's also a few appliances, or not appliances, but um, I guess small appliances that I'm going to show you too, and I'm not going to move those, um, but I'll show you those throughout. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is our, actually our island. So um, we had our house uh, custom built and we got to design everything. What I wanted to make sure of is that the kitchen was really designed to my specifications since I love to cook and I spend so much time in here. So we had a butcher block counter made and I believe we got this made at either Lowe's or Home Depot and um, sometimes I get questions on how I clean it. So uh, basically you have to condition butcher block wood so I get this at Menards or you can probably get it at any home supply store this is the Howard butcher block conditioner it's um, food grade min mineral oil and wax and so you do have to condition your butcher block I would say um, every two to three months depending on um, you know how much you use it to clean it I usually just use a wet microfiber cloth and I'll use, I'll get this wet, and then I just use like a mild, you know, regular cleaner. So uh, this is the orange clove scent by Mrs. Myers. I like all of their scents, and that has done pretty well cleaning this off. Now, as far as like sanitizing it, um, I guess I really don't feel that I need to sanitize it because anytime I'm cooking meat or, you know, anytime I'm cutting meat, I'm not cutting it directly on this. I put a plastic cutting board down. So... That's how I clean it. And then if there are stains, what you can do is cut a lemon in half and then use some kosher salt. So you cut the lemon in half, kind of squeeze some of the juice on the stain, put a pile of kosher salt, and then you just scrub it with the lemon and that will help get some of the stains out. Now you can see over here where I've, you know, cut, um, it's gonna look worn and it's not always gonna look perfect and it's gonna stain and you just have to do your best to keep it clean but that's sort of like the charm um, of butcher block is uh, you know having that like worn sort of um, feeling to your counter so I just wanted to mention uh, that it's not really a kitchen tool um, but I thought since it's something that I obviously use frequently I wanted to mention it okay so Again, not really a kitchen tool, but something I use in the kitchen quite frequently. I recently got these Pioneer Woman uh, hot, or I guess what do you call them, oven mitts from Walmart, and I really love them. I like them because they're not super bulky. It just covers the part of your hand that you need to cover. There's two of them, so if you need to use both hands to take something out of the oven, uh, they are a super you know useful for that and I do like the way that they look too so I wanted to mention those and then I get a lot of my cleaning supplies from Grove Collaborative I actually have a separate video on how um, Grove works and there's always a link down below if you want to try it out but I love their kitchen towels so usually every month when I order from them I always add a kitchen towel to my order because I'm just trying to slowly replace all of the old towels that I still have from when we got married but these towels are awesome they are nice and big um, they're super absorbent I like how um, I don't know I just like how they feel if that makes sense uh, they're not like limp and gross when they get wet like some you know dish towels or tea towels are and they come in a bunch of different colors um, I have some red ones some navy ones I think I have like some tan ones and gray as well so I like 
I, I, I just like them. I like the way they look, and I think they are the best um, kitchen towels that I have found. So the next thing that I want to share is actually this salt container. So I got this as a gift, I think three or four Christmases ago from Adam's parents, but I was able to find this on Amazon, so it's still available if you guys want it. I always like to keep my salt out in a container on the counter. Um, I like to use kosher salt for cooking. It To me, it's so much easier to just grab it with your fingers and sprinkle it on your food. You can really like feel how much salt you're putting into your dish and after you cook for a while you just sort of um, can, can season your food uh, a lot more to, to taste if that makes sense hopefully I'm making sense but this glass thing here is removable so you can take that out put it through the dishwasher and then I like that it has a lid it's super easy to flip up you don't have to worry about taking the lid off and it getting lost anywhere I believe originally it came with a spoon and that's long since lost since I normally just use my fingers to uh, get my salt out but that's one thing I wanted to mention because um, I know that some people have asked me about it and um, I finally found the link to it okay another thing I wanted to mention is these bag holders um, you can get these on Amazon also but basically these are for holding bags open while you are putting food in them. So they're great for freezer meals. You can put your Ziploc bag right in here. You just clip it up under um, the little clips there and then it holds it open so you can fill it with food. So if you're doing like a freezer, you know, freezer meal session or you wanna freeze like chili, um, it just makes it a lot easier to get your food into the bag without it going all over the place. And I know this is something that I resisted getting for a long time because I thought I don't really need these, but they're not that expensive. And honestly, if you do a lot of cooking and a lot of um, freezing stuff, they make your life a lot easier. So I would recommend them. The next thing I wanted to mention is these um, produce keepers. I think they're called Freshworks. Rubbermaid makes them and I have several different sizes. Um, these are great to put produce in once you've washed it to keep it in your refrigerator to have throughout the week. So it comes with three pieces. It comes with the base. This is sort of like the medium size container. I have some larger ones that I use for lettuce and then I have a smaller one that I sometimes use for berries. But this is just kind of the base container. And then this little tray comes in the bottom and you can see it has little feet on it. Those are so that this tray stays up off the bottom of the dish and your food can sit on top of it. The water will drip down into the bottom and that way your fruit or vegetables won't get mushy like sitting in that water in the bottom of the container. Uh, the lid also has a vent in it, I believe, which helps, um, you know, let out some of the moisture as well. So um, these are dishwasher safe. I always run them through the dishwasher and I don't have any problems. Uh, so I definitely recommend these if you're interested in uh, that type of thing to keep your produce good in the refrigerator. Okay, next I wanted to mention uh, my immersion blender. So this is a Cuisinart. Uh, smart stick immersion blender and I haven't priced this in a while but I don't think these are too expensive I want to say they're like less than $30 depending on the model that you get but most of the time what I'm using this for is when I make like a pureed soup it is so easy to just take this you can plug it in and you stick it right down in your pot and turn it on rather than transferring like sauce or soup when it's super hot into a blender it's just so much easier and safer to just stick this down in your pot and zhuzh it up um, the other thing I use it for is when I make my Starbucks copycat egg bites. Those call for um, cottage cheese and you kind of have to blend it up so that the cottage cheese like blends in with the eggs and that's really good for making those too. So immersion blender for the win. Next thing that I want to talk about are my glass measuring cups with spouts. Um, so these are all Pyrex brand Adam actually got me a new set for Christmas, so I was excited about that. This is something, again, that I've had ever since I got married, and so my old ones were looking a little worn. But um, this particular set, I believe, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find the one that he bought and link it down below. But this one comes with a one-cup measuring, um, a two-cup measuring, and then this one, I believe, is eight cups. So... This is really good for mixing like a small amount of batter or something that you want to use a spout to pour. I always use these for measuring liquid ingredients, so like milk or oil or anything like that that's going to go into 
a dish. Um, I like that they are super easy to clean. They go right through the dishwasher. Um, I don't have any problems with that. I like that they're see-through so that you can sort of, you know, get down. What I usually do is like get down on eye level like this and, and pour in my liquid until I um, get the desired amount. So love these. I also have one from Goodwill that's like a larger um, Pyrex bowl with a spout. It's super old. It's like probably an antique at this point. So I won't have a link to that, um, but I'll definitely link these because these are indispensable um, in the kitchen in my opinion. Um, on the theme of measuring cups, I have these two from um, Pampered Chef. So I, I've had this one for a while. It is a four tablespoon measuring cup. I really like this when I'm making salad dressings. A lot of times, you know, you'll make a dressing and it'll call for like three tablespoons of oil or something like that. And it's so, it's so much easier to just pour it in here. You can pour it up to the three tablespoon mark. The nice thing about these is when you're looking straight down, you can actually see as you're pouring your liquid in what, you know, how many tablespoons you've got. So I really like that. And then since I liked this little one so much, recently I also got um, a one cup measuring cup that's the same thing from Pampered Chef. So I haven't actually used this one yet, um, but I probably will be soon in my next meal prep. As far as regular measuring cups go for dry ingredients, I purchased this set um, a while ago on Amazon, so I'll find it and link it down below, but I really like these. They're just stainless steel um, measuring cups. They do say on the bottom, you know, like this is the quarter cup measure. I like the handle. I just think that they look really nice. They have a good weight to them. Um, so I really like this set of, of measuring cups and I use those quite frequently when I'm baking. Uh, this is a set of measuring spoons that my mom got me for Christmas and I thought it was kind of unique. I actually like them a lot and so I wanted to share them with you. But they are magnetic. So you have your quarter teaspoon, your half teaspoon, your one teaspoon, half a tablespoon, and then your tablespoon. There's a magnet on the inside here or sort of in the middle of the spoon and that way they can nest together. What I also like about these is you can just take out one at a time versus like the measuring spoons that are all together in a ring and then you end up having to wash the whole set. I like that you can just take out one of these, use it, and then put it back with the rest. The other nice thing about these is that they come with two shapes of spoons. So on this side you have a round spoon and on this side you have an oblong spoon and that is really nice if you're trying to get into a spice jar. Sometimes um, the round you know, spoons will not fit into uh, the spice jar and so that's nice to have as well. So I thought those were really unique. Um, I'm really liking using them a lot. So I want to talk about colanders for a little bit. I bought this uh, stainless steel colander on Amazon many years ago for myself when one of my old ones broke and I love it. I think it is probably the best colander that I have ever had. Um, I, I actually looked at this a couple weeks ago and I think they still have it on Amazon. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure I look that up for you guys. But the reason I like this colander is you see how tiny those holes are. Um, this means that you can drain like rice and orzo in here and not have it fall through the cracks of the strainer. Um, I don't know. I, I really love this strainer. I think it's a great size. It's held up nicely for me through the years. I've put it through the dishwasher many times. I like that it has the sturdy handles on the side. This is always what I use when I'm um, draining pasta or anything like that. So we totally recommend that. And then the other thing I think is essential is really just a small um, strainer like this. So what I would use this for is if I'm going to drain like a can of beans. I obviously don't need like a whole big colander to do that. And so it's nice to have just a small one of these uh, just to drain cans of beans or corn or whatever you need to do with that. The other thing I like about this is that it has the... Um, I don't know what you would call these, like the little holders on the end so you can place it, let me show you, so you can place it over a dish such as this and then if you there's any liquid that you wanted to save you could capture that um, down below. So definitely think that it's worth it to invest in a small strainer like this too. Okay, moving along to some utensils. Um, I'm just thinking, I don't know how long <laughs> this video is going to be. I, I kind of anticipated that it was going to be a long one but um, hopefully you guys enjoy it just the same. So um, I'll just quickly talk about some utensils that I use pretty regularly. 
This is a small spatula from Pampered Chef. I really love these for serving brownies and bar cookies. Um, this, the size of this little spatula is so great for getting small things like that out of the pan. I also have uh, metal tongs that I love to use. I have several sets of these and use them weekly, I would say, in my cooking and meal prep. And these are available on Amazon too. Uh, something I talk about in my meal prep videos a lot is my chef's knife. So this is a Zwilling J.A. Henkel's. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see it. It's a professional 8-inch chef's knife. Uh, this is one of the best quality knives that you can buy and if you take care of it uh, it will last you a lifetime so sometimes I get questions on how to sharpen it and I and honestly I, I don't know because my husband does it for me he's more of an outdoorsy person and he has a sharpening steel that he manually sharpens it with um, so I'll try and ask him some more details on that and maybe type it out down below But I'm sorry. I can't give you more information on that um, I'm sure there's other you know resources out there about how best to sharpen your knives But the thing I like about this knife is it's nice and heavy. So when I'm chopping um, Veggies when it's when you have a nice heavy knife that's sharp It will help you you know easily cut through your vegetables the other thing to keep in mind is you see how this steel um, goes you know is the knife here and then goes all the way to the end so this is just one continuous um, piece of steel it's not like you know you have a handle and a knife so really good quality knife I can't remember how much they are it is a little bit of an investment but I would definitely recommend it it will just make your life so much easier um, when you're chopping in the kitchen Next thing I think is essential is a paring knife. I do um, have quite a few brands of these, but this one I got from Pampered Chef. One of my coworkers just had a party, and so I ordered a few things. Um, you know, nice sharp paring knives are really good for like cutting up fruit for kids. I always use them to cut up apples. If you want to cut off a few slices of cheese, or um, you know, cut up mangoes, or just little things like that. And I like that you can just throw these right in the dishwasher. Um, another thing I wanted to mention about the knives is I don't think it's recommended to put your knives in the dishwasher. Um, I do because I have this top rack in my Bosch that um, is up here and so this is more for like delicate items. So I actually do put my chef's knife up here and I haven't had any issues with it. Um, but I definitely wouldn't re recommend putting it on the regular rack. I would probably uh, recommend hand washing it, honestly. Okay, this is a little spreader that is also a Pampered Chef item. I love this thing. I use this every time I frost something. So if I make pumpkin bars or banana bars in, you know, like a 9 by 13 pan, this just makes it so much easier to spread the frosting or if you're frosting brownies or anything like that. So definitely recommend this. Another thing I use semi-frequently, I would say, is a microplane grater. So I got this many years ago um, to great citrus zest so this has a really fine rasp on it um, literally I've probably had this for 10 to 12 years now I've, I've had it for such a long time and it's lasted this whole time and I throw this in the dishwasher too and it's it's been fine so I use this for citrus zest if I need lemon zest or lime or orange zest I also use it if I buy a block of parmesan cheese I like to shred it using this and it makes the shreds um, like really fine and melt really quickly so that's microplane and then I do have a couple different scoops um, different size scoops so this one is more of a small um, cookie scoop and this is really good for if you're making like chocolate chip cookies or any kind of drop cookies it's so much easier to just scoop your dough out and then plop it out on the baking tray rather than you know using trying to use two spoons to do it now this is also good for if you're making mini muffins. You know, it's super quick to scoop out your muffin batter and put it in the mini muffin tins. This one is a larger one, and I believe this one is actually an ice cream scoop. I don't use it for that. I use this one when I make regular size muffins. So again, super easy to scoop out how much you need. This is pretty much the perfect size for a regular muffin, and then you know, dump it in your muffin tin. So 
I, I believe I got both of these on Amazon too, so I'll find those for you guys. And then on the muffin theme also, uh, what I like are these silicone muffin cups. So these are just like regular, you know, they're kind of just like the paper liners, except they are made of silicone. So these are really great if you're making uh, like a muffin with a really sticky batter, you can put these in your muffin tin in place of the paper ones. Um, I usually spray mine with a little bit of Pam and the muffins come right out. I've also used these to make little egg bites or little quiches in the oven. They're oven safe. Um, I also like to use them for my kids' lunch boxes. So if I have like a container, I might, you know, put a couple of them in there and put like cheese and crackers in one or something like that. So definitely love these. Um, they're inexpensive and I've gotten a lot of use out of them over the years. Okay, so this simple box grater is another one of my most used kitchen tools. These are super inexpensive. I actually think I got this one at Ikea, but I'll find one on Amazon and link it down below. Mostly I just use the um, large grater holes in this. So I typically, um, you know, I do buy pre-shredded cheese frequently, but every once in a while, um, like if I'm making homemade pizza or something, sometimes I like to shred my own because it just melts so much better. So I frequently use this for grating cheese. You can also use it to slice cheese. I don't really use that very much. Um, this side is like a coarse grater. I don't ever use that. And then this is a fine grater. I don't really think I ever use that side either. Um, another thing you can do is you can use this to grate zucchini for if you're making like zucchini bread or zucchini muffins. And then you can also use this to grate carrots like if you want grated carrots for a salad. Okay, so I always keep this right by my stove. This is actually a Rachel Ray um, extra virgin olive oil, or she always says EVOO um, bottle. And I refill this with olive oil that I get from Costco. I love having it right out on the counter, right by the stove. It's super easy to just grab it, um, you know, drizzle some in the pan if I'm going to saute something. I do wash it out periodically in the dishwasher, um, so just an FYI there because it can get a little dirty, you know, just from grease and stuff like that sitting next to the stove. But I really love this and I like that it looks better sitting out on the counter than just like a regular, you know, bottle of olive oil wood. Okay, next thing is my salad spinner. So you can uh, definitely know that if you've been watching my channel for any period of time that I love my OXO salad spinner. I have the large one. Um, I always link it in my meal prep videos because I use it so often and I just love it. Um, it's I've had this for several years now. I would say maybe about, mm, I don't know, three or four years maybe and it is still super functional. Um, I like that the strainer comes out so that I can soak berries in here or produce or anything like that that I need. Um, and then obviously the spinning you know, function too if you're gonna dry your greens. The thing I would say is the top is a bit cumbersome to wash. Um, you kind of do have to hand wash the top, but this I have put in the top rack of the dishwasher without any problems. Okay, mixing bowls. So I have several sets that I really like. This set is a plastic set that is um, Cuisinart. I have looked for this on Amazon before and I think they're available on there. I did get this as a gift so I didn't purchase it myself. But I love that there are, there's actually another bowl that comes with this so there's three total. I love the bright colors. I love that they have a spout on the end if you need to pour something. I like the little rubber handle here for a grip. And they're also nice and deep so if there's something that you want to you know whisk up like if you want to whisk up eggs or something like that um, you know it's not going to spill over the edge so there are those plastic ones and then also recently for christmas this year my mom got me this set of stainless steel ones and these are available on amazon also this by the way this is not sponsored by amazon but <laughs> i just wanted to mention that i use Amazon Prime for every single thing in my life. So, you know, if I have something, I most likely got, <laughs> I most likely got it from there. Um, I love this set of mixing bowls because they're stainless steel. I did not have a nice um, stainless steel mixing bowl set, so that was really great that um, she got me those. I believe there's three or four bowls total. Um, I just got a couple out to show you guys, but again, they have the nice rubber handle on here and the spout on the other end. Sometimes it's nice to have stainless steel mixing bowls. Like if you're gonna whip up heavy cream or something like that, sometimes they recommend that you chill the bowl first. The other thing that I like is that they come with lids. So if there's something that you want to um, you know, make in here, you can put the lid on and stick it in the fridge. So those are great too. I've been loving using those. 
Okay, so this is called a fat separator, and this is something that I think isn't um, as common to see in kitchens. I've always had one because I love making gravy, and uh, when you make homemade stock or broth, one of the things that you want to do is um, kind of skim off some of the fat so that your gravy or your soup or whatever isn't super greasy. So what this is good for is when you have um, broth or stock, you basically pour it through the strainer into here, it's four cups. The solids will stay out here. And then this spout is low enough so that after you let this sit for, you know, 30, 60 minutes, all the fat will rise up to the top. All the fat will rise up to the top and then you can go ahead and pour your broth out and make your gravy and it will only pour you know from the bottom of the cup here so the fat will stay out of it so i do have a video i think um, when i made gravy for thanksgiving dinner so i'll try and remember and link that but that just gives, gives you an idea of what you can use this for you know i don't use it for anything else other than making gravy or stock really but it's one of those things that um you know, I feel is indispensable. If you don't use it a lot, then it might not be. But uh, this, I like this brand too. This is the OXO brand, and I believe I got this on Amazon as well. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is my juicer. This is a Zule juicer. I'm not sure um, about that brand, but I've I got this on Amazon, and it's a citrus juicer, and I like it because it has two kind of settings i guess you could call it in here one for limes which are smaller and lemons so i i use this a ton in my cooking and you guys have probably seen it in my meal prep videos before so it's super inexpensive i'll link that down below another thing i wanted to mention that i use all the time is mason jars i get these at walmart you can buy the um, ceiling rings you know separately i, I know that there's different options on you know you can buy plastic lids or whatever but i just typically use the you know the standard metal lids i like to use these when i make my own salad dressing i'll put these in here and shake it up and keep it in the refrigerator like that you can put chopped fruit in here you can use them as drinking glasses um, just a ton of different things i actually also put my homemade stock in here when i do that um, for storage so yeah mason jar is always a good idea and then I just wanted to quickly mention these little dressing cups that I also get on Amazon. I love these for meal prep, and yes, I know they're disposable, and I know that we're all trying to reduce the amount of disposable things that we use, but let's, I mean, I'm trying to be realistic here and, and say that I'm a full-time working mom, and uh, there, are some, there are just some times when I'm going to use disposable containers and Ziploc bags, and I apologize if that offends you, but... Um, these are really great to put, you could put like a little bit of trail mix in here for your kids to take to school for a snack. What I usually use them for is either sauce or dressing, so they don't leak. Um, I like to keep my dressing separate from my salad when I pack it for lunch, and so that's great for these, definitely. Um, a couple more utensils. I really like this wooden spoon. You can see here that it's sort of angled on one end it has a corner um, I really like this when I'm using this in a deep pot it allows you to kind of get in the corner of the pot and make sure that everything is stirred up um, I believe I got this on Amazon too so I'll look for that but I love this wooden spoon um, this is a meat chopper from Pampered Chef also and I use this all the time when I'm sauteing ground meat, so like either ground turkey or chicken or um, ground beef, it allows you to break up the ground beef so it's really finely crumbled, and I love this. Use it all the time, would totally recommend it. Another thing that I use is a large slotted spoon. Um, I don't even know where this one came from. I've had it for <laughs> probably 10 years, but this is another tool that I think is indispensable because there are times when you need to fish something out of a pot, like maybe you're trying to fish out a bay leaf. This is great if you're boiling eggs. You can use this to scoop out the eggs, so use that a lot too. And then for whisks, um, this is my favorite regular balloon whisk. I believe this is OXO as well. Um, I'll try to find it online, but this is a nice, sturdy, heavy whisk, and it has... Um, become my favorite and then I also wanted to mention I have a flat whisk too so this is more for like if you're making a pan sauce and you need to whisk something up in a skillet it's nice and flat so you can do that so 
those are some other utensils. And then really quickly, I just wanted to mention a doubled egg tray. So I don't even know where I got this one or where my grandma got it, but she bought it for me a long, long time ago. I actually think it might, I got it at my bridal shower. Um, but I love it to take deviled eggs to parties. Um, it's not super fancy, you know, it's plastic. It comes with a plastic lid, but it's really great, um, you know, for that purpose to be able to store them in the refrigerator and then take them to a party. Okay, next is um, a baking sheet with a rack. So I have no idea where I got these cooling racks. I believe I got them at Walmart in a three pack a long time ago. But I love that they fit in my large sheet trays. And what I like to use these for is to bake bacon in the oven rather than fry it on the stove top. You can also use this for if you're like, you know, dipping something like dipping cookies and icing and you want to set them to drain. Um, you know, you can set them on there. I believe they now sell these in sets. So like they, they'll sell the pan with the rack. And if I can find some of those, I'll link them. But definitely I would say um, this is a great addition to your kitchen if you're going to cook bacon in the oven. Um, so this is a Dutch oven and Adam got me this for Christmas and I love it. It is the Lodge brand and it's nice and sturdy. It's cast iron enamel. It's almost got, I don't want to say it's nonstick because it's not nonstick, but it's got a nice smooth interior. I like to use this for making beef stew. Um, there's a recipe that I make for cider beef. I have that recipe on my channel actually. And so well, the great thing about these is you can start your dish off on the stove top, like when you're sauteing your beef and vegetables, and then you can finish it in the oven. So you can take this directly from the stove top and put it into the oven. That's kind of the purpose of having a Dutch oven. But um, I do love this. Uh, it is a little bit of an investment. I don't think it's super expensive, but I also love the color too. Um, I just wanted to talk really quickly about storage containers. I did actually do a separate video several months ago about my favorite lunch storage containers. So I'll link that down below. That kind of goes more into depth about what I use to pack lunches. But I just wanted to mention a few things. I do like to use glass containers as much as I can when I do my meal prep, just because they don't stain and they last so much longer than the plastic ones. I have several different kinds. This is a snapware set that I believe I got from Costco. Um, so these have the lids that snap off and they have the rubber seal so they do not leak, which is really nice. And then I also have a Pyrex set. I cannot remember where I got these, but I think they're available online also. So this is like the perfect size for packing lunch for work. These are also oven safe. So if you wanted to bake like a little something in here, you know, like a mini lasagna or something, you could definitely do that. And then I also like these glass divided storage container, you know, lunch containers um, from Amazon. I don't give these to the kids just because they're kind of heavy and I don't want them breaking them, but this is nice. I actually just did a meal prep video a couple weeks ago where I made like hummus and pita and vegetables and it fit really well in here. Um, and then they come with the snap on lid as well. Uh, also for storage containers, when I do meal prep, uh, I like to use these Rubbermaid Brilliance containers. They also have a rubber seal, so they do not leak. This one is a nice size to take, uh, you know, like a small salad to work, or sometimes I put cottage cheese in this and take it to work. And then the larger sizes I like to use for produce storage in my, um, refrigerator. So if you see me do meal prep before, you've seen me like cut up fruit and put it in here for the kids. I like that they're super clear because you can actually see what's in them and it just makes it easier when you're, you know, rummaging through the fridge or the kids say, you know, I'm hungry, I want something. I can say, oh, well, look, we have a bunch of fruit for you. So definitely love these containers and would recommend them. All right, so Pyrex glass dishes is another thing I wanted to talk about. I have quite a collection of these. I've just, I don't know how I've collected so many over the years, but I probably have four of these um, 9 by 13 ones. This is a smaller size. I'm not sure on the dimensions of this, but I like to use this for, if I'm making a smaller casserole that I know, you know, I know my family's not going to eat a whole entire 9 by 13 pan of something, I'll make it in this smaller dish. And then I have a couple square ones as well. I believe this one is an eight by eight. So this one I usually use to make either like crustless quiche or brownies with. And then this one I believe is a bigger 
nine by nine. This one was gifted down by my grandma. It's really old, <laughs> um, but I keep it for sentimental value. But uh, definitely Pyrex dishes are great for uh, baking. They're also good for holding food while you're doing your meal prep or even storing them in the fridge. I do have some lids. Um, I didn't get those out, but I do have some rubber lids that fit on these. So definitely love my Pyrex um, glassware. Uh, as far as pots and pans go, I just got out a couple to show you that I use often. So I love this saucepan. I got this for Christmas from Adam's parents. It's a Cuisinart brand and it's a stainless steel saucepan. It's not super big, but they do have different sizes and I love this thing. It's just so, like you can just tell when you pick it up, it's like a really good quality saucepan. I like the stainless steel because you can, you know, scrub it out if you get burnt particles on the bottom. It'll last forever if you take care of it. Um, the only thing I would say is that I don't like that this doesn't have a rubber lid because I have burnt myself. <laughs> you know, if you have something cooking in there and then you grab this, you just have to be careful that you don't burn your hand. But I really love this um, saucepan. I think it's a super um, high quality one. And then another thing I think that is really you know, good to have is a small skillet. This is actually just a Pioneer Woman that I got from Walmart, but I like to use this for frying eggs in the morning or just anything when I'm not cooking like a huge batch of something. If I'm cooking more, then I like to use this uh, Cuisinart nonstick skillet. It comes with a lid. So I'll, I'll try, I don't know if these are available anymore, but I'll try to find something and link it down below. You can see that mine is very well, <laughs> well loved, but uh, this is a nonstick skillet. So, you know, over time it does get scratched. You kind of have to watch it if it starts flaking off, you know, if the Teflon starts flaking off, then toss it. But um, I really love these skillets. I actually have two of them. I like that they're all metal. There's no rubber on here, so you can actually put this in the oven if you need to. Um, and then the glass lid is really high quality and nice to have as well. Um, the other thing that I use um, semi-often is my large um, stock pot. So this one is also nonstick. This is great for boiling like large amounts of pasta. I like that it has a uh, glass lid and it's nice and deep. Um, so definitely this is something I use frequently also. Okay, so the other thing, uh, or small appliance that I use quite a bit is this Kasori multi-cooker. Uh, this is actually a slow cooker, but you can also saute in it. You can also cook rice, yogurt. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it that I haven't used it for yet. But why I like it is because you can saute in it. So like if you want to make a chili, like a slow cooker chili, you can actually saute your ground beef right in there, you know, drain it, add the rest of your ingredients, and then slow cook it for the rest of the day. This insert comes out, so it's super easy to wash. I also like that it's programmable. So sometimes I've gone from my house up to like 10 to 11 hours a day, and so I can set this to slow cook for like 10 hours, and then it'll go straight to keep warm, so that it'll stay warm until dinner time. I don't know, I this is also an investment, but I am super impressed with this. Um, and if you're in the market for a new crock pot, I would definitely recommend getting this just because it does so much more and it's it's awesome. I love it. Okay, so you knew I wasn't going to uh, make this video without showing you my trusty Instant Pot. It has quickly become one of my most used kitchen appliances over the last several years. I have the 8-quart version. Um, I'll link it down below. If you do a lot of cooking like I do, I would recommend the 8-quart version just because I feel like it is a large one, but you can definitely fit a lot of things in here, like especially when I'm making chicken or beef stock. This thing is like filled up to the max, and I just like having the larger quantity. As far as accessories, I don't have that many. I do have these silicone molds to make the Starbucks egg bites, so those are great. And then also a... Um, a trivet to use with it too. So this is good if you set this in the bottom, if you want to, you know, put hard, you know, eggs on top of it to make hard boiled eggs in your instant pot. And then one of the things that I really loved is this strainer that fits in there. So I'll link this down below too. Um, but I really love this. I like putting this in here and then cooking my hard boiled eggs. They're super easy to just lift right out. Or if you're making like mashed potatoes in the instant pot, it's really great for that too. So um, I get, sometimes I get questions like, is it, do you think getting an instant pot is really worth it? And in my opinion, yes, I 100%, uh, I love it. Now, the only thing I will say is that I've never slow cooked in here before because I'm like 
so partial to my crock pots that I've never used this for slow cooking. Um, you guys let me know if you've used your Instant Pot for slow cooking and how it turned out. Okay, so last but not least, I'm just going to mention a few items in this corner over here. So I have a Hamilton Beach Flex Brew coffee maker that I got on Amazon. I've had it for about a year now and have had really no problems with it. I like that you can make a carafe of coffee or you can also brew a K-cup. So love that. It's programmable. You can set it up to, you know, brew your coffee in the morning ahead of time. Uh, in my appliance garage here, um, which this pulls down, but I have my Cuisinart food processor, which I love. It is a really nice quality food processor. Adam got it for me for Christmas several years ago. Again, it's an investment, but like these things will last your whole entire life. So, so will a KitchenAid mixer. Um, you know, a lot of this, I just, I feel like, um, you know, if you're in the kitchen cooking a lot, something like something like this is really indispensable and you're going to get a ton of use out of it. You're going to get your money's worth. These tools are meant to last a lifetime. So, um, and again, this is not sponsored. I just feel passionately about cooking. So, <laughs> you know, you do you. But uh, so I love this food processor for making like pie crust and hummus and dips and dressings. Love it. I also love my KitchenAid mixer. I just have like the plain Jane regular white model. I've had it for probably 15 years now and I absolutely love it. I use it all the time uh, for baking and if you guys have watched my meal prep videos, you know that. Okay, so last thing I want to mention is my air fryer. This is something that I sort of resisted getting because I wasn't quite sure that I needed it. But honestly, it has come in really handy for quick meals. So I have the House Smile brand, and I think it's available on Amazon. I'll look and link it down below. Um, but basically, you can cook... Um, Anything that you would normally fry, you can cook in your air fryer. So the things that we use it most for are like French fries. Sometimes the kids will, um, you know, have pizza rolls for lunch on the weekends. I can cook those in there. Um, I've cooked crab cakes in there. Um, just a ton of different stuff. It makes it, your food super crisp and crunchy without having to use a ton of oil. Okay guys, so that is it. I'm not even sure how long this video is going to be once I edit it, but I feel like it's going to be a long one. But I really hope that this helped you sort of see, um, you know, a, a good overview of all of the uh, tools that I have in my kitchen. Again, you know, I've been collecting these for so many years, so, you know, please don't feel out, feel like you need to go out and buy all this stuff if you're just starting out. Um, I just wanted to give you um, an idea of stuff that I use frequently that I think really helps um, if you're interested in cooking. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.